you like books or movies or TV shows or songs with lyrics? You know, things that were created by writers? Of course you do. Do you like watching people type? I doubt it. Do you like hearing people tell you about how they came up with the things they type? Maybe. And there are lots of shows like that. But this isn't one of them. Do you ever procrastinate? Writers do too. So if you've ever enjoyed a great book or film or TV show or song or poem, and you thought, I'll bet the woman who wrote this epic high fantasy TV series, or the guy who wrote this funny queer sci-fi novel, or the person who writes this punch you in the gut poetry would be really fun to hang out with. And I'd like to hear them confess their bad not writing habits. You're in the right not writing place. I'm Benjamin Gorman, and the quiet guy behind the glass over there is Doug the producer. I write novels and collections of poetry and stuff, and Doug does his best to try to make me sound better. From Not A Pipe Publishing, welcome to Writers Not Writing. Listen for the word imbibe. Yeah. That's a good one. If I take my time. Today's guest is B. Zelkovich. Uh, B. Brittany uh, writes speculative fiction, anything from dragon hunting, space whales, demon dealing, ghost tales. Uh, when she isn't escaping into her imagination, she escapes to the wonders of the Pacific Northwest with her spouse and four-legged son, Simon. What kind of four-legged son is Simon? Uh, he is a mutt uh, dog. Uh, we think he's a black mouse cur mix. The Humane Society said Beagle Shepherd. So honestly, who knows? My dog, Evie, is a, uh, uh, you know, say rescue dog. Who knows what kind? My guess is mostly pit. Like you'd see her and people are like, oh, that's a beautiful pit bull. And I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. know. You know. But yep. uh, yes, that's, that is, uh, the you know, I, I like the, the, the mutts, I think are probably genetically superior like I, I look at the British royal family and I'm like, no, don't do that to dogs. <laughs> don't do that. It's like pugs. Um, no, no shade to pugs. I love pugs, but man, they're kind of rough to look at sometimes. Yeah, well, and so many health issues. I'm like, no, yeah. give, give me a mutt. That that's fine. Give me a healthy mutt, please. Um Simon is I just turned eight and he acts like he's two. Like he's gonna truck forever, it seems yeah. like. So oh, yeah, good dog. Um yep. So uh, before we launch into the show itself, we always need to make, I I need to remember that our listeners can't see how we dress up. We dress up for every episode, full costume, you know, we really go all out. And so tell everybody about what you are choosing to wear for this show today. Well, I was told that this was a very like high end podcast establishment. So I chose to go full Audrey Hepburn a la Breakfast at Tiffany's. So I've got the black gown and I've got the black satin gloves. I rented some diamonds on very short notice. So feeling and those are real. Yes. Oh, that would look fabulous. Yes. I hope folks, I mean, folks who are on YouTube can see the diamonds. That is. I hope it doesn't like reflect too much and like blind people. It's, it's a little, you know, it's very sparkly. Uh, I can tone down the diamonds. Yeah, no, 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 no. It looks amazing. Well, I, uh, I, I'm going to be very transparent with our listeners. I never want to uh, leave a listener feeling that they were deceived. I am. Pre- we are pre-recording this episode, so you'll notice that the uh, news that we talk about might be a little dated. Uh, you know, this is before Trump is arrested hopefully. Um, so uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're recording. And so I had to do a little bit of a quick change. So last week's episode, I was in that full abominable snowman outfit to you know fit with the weather. So good. And this week I went with, well, in order to do the quick change quickly, I am in this neon green Borat bikini, which I, I had to look up is called a mankini. It has a formal Man, name. It has a name. It has a name. I'm in this mankini. And the reason I went with that is I could put it underneath the abominable. Uh, right. Outfit. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the very the, the the classy breakfast at Tiffany's look, and I've got the classy Borat mankini. The the shout yes, out to would... classic film. Um, <laughs> Two classic films represented here. Exactly. Today. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it is uncomfortable. I have to, you know, the way that I it, j- just sitting. I, I think this is designed to stand on a beach and not sit yeah. in a, a pleather chair. It's a little sticky, be in water. 
Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, so it's not a look that I will, uh, sport often, but I thought I'd try it out for the show and we'll see it's, it's airy. It's a lot, you know, I can. Thank you for choosing my episode to test yes, out the mankini. Yes. I really appreciate <laughs> that's, it. That's, yeah, you're, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> So uh, what has been keeping you, this is a show about procrastination. What has been keeping you away from your writing this week? Oh, uh, God of War. <laughs> I've been is, playing. What are we up to? Is this four? Uh, well, if we're counting all the early P PS2 games, I think this is five, the newest one. Um, God of War 2018, which I just finished last week, was number four. And then God of War Ragnarok just came out in November. And so now I'm caught up and I've started playing that. So and this is the one with the sun, right? Bo yeah, both 2018 and this one are oh. Kratos and his son. Kratos and see, and I am not a, I don't want to start the Xbox versus PlayStation wars. I know that that's a real thing. I'm, we're an Xbox. It's not household. for me. I have them both. Okay, yeah, but uh, <laughs> that is a game series that I would love. Like, I just think it is. I mean, I teach a a legends and mythology class. Like, it is so. Oh, you up would my love alley. this so much. Yeah, oh my I gosh, I so. I'm really enjoying it because in this set of games, they have Kratos has abandoned Greek mythology and he's now in Norse mythology, and so I know like just a little bit, like just enough to where I'm hearing names and I'm like, I know that. Why do I know that? And, but not enough to like spoil anything. So it's been really, really fun. I I, I am very jealous. I Noah and I uh, yesterday were playing a bunch of Halo Infinite. We oh, actually yeah. we hooked up a second TV because it doesn't have the split screen yet. And mm -hmm. so we uh, were both playing Halo Infinite together and it was, Wonderful. It was a very good day. But that was that was my recommendation for last week, which of course happened a long, long time ago and not reported, <laughs> you know, an hour ago. Um, so... Uh, my recommendation for folks for uh, procrastination uh, got together with a bunch of colleagues this last week and played Cards Against Humanity, which I know that's not new. Like, you know, everybody knows about Cards Against Humanity. But if you are playing it, I highly recommend finding the right group of people. It makes all the difference. You know, if you've got you, people. You have, you have to play like to your audience, yes. which is why I'm terrible at that game, because I can only play to my husband's sense of humor. And so everyone else is just like, wow, this chick is really weird. I don't get any of her jokes. <laughs> yes. Well, and that was the, the fun thing as we were playing was like, oh, this person's more of a prude. Like they're going to be shocked by this combination. Oh, this, you know, person is, you know, of this particular identity. And so they're going to love this one that's a, you mm -hmm. know, a reference. And so we laughed really, really hard. It was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, it is different with every group, but highly yeah. recommend Cards Against Humanity. So the news, which will now be a week out of date, uh, hence the mankini. So uh, what uh, what what has been getting your attention in the news a week before people <laughs> was, are listening to the show? Uh, so as of this recording, I was on Twitter and yeah, I'm still on Twitter. Oh, me too. Um, and I saw a headline. I didn't click in because I'm a terrible person, but I saw a headline about a um, stabbing in Canada perpetrated by a group of eight teenage girls against a single like adult man and they killed him um I didn't like see any other I didn't follow up on it or see like what else has come out about it that's literally all I know but the reason it was like distracting for me is because so many people in the comments were like what is wrong with these children and da -da 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 -da. and I'm you know I'm an educator in a in a public high school and I'm like have y'all met teenage girls yeah. They're vicious. They well, can't vicious. Be. Not all also, of them. Like how much, how many times have we not had read this the article about the flipped script, you yes. know, where yes, a yes, man yes. kills a young woman and it's just, Oh, that just happens all the time. That's especially just, if she's mm -hmm. a young woman of color, like, Oh, it doesn't right. even make the news. And then, yeah. you know, the, these teenage girls kill this guy and it's like, mm, maybe, uh, you know, we should pay attention to the absence of the inverse. <laughs> For know, sure. Like, Absolutely. Um, well, mine was a Twitter story too. I saw this. This is wild. This last week, or just a couple of days ago, the temperature in Wyoming at one point dropped from 43 degrees to 10 degrees in 10 minutes. Oh. Right? Like no. you're a cow, you're out on the, you know, in, in Wyoming. And the now temperature you're dead. dropped so fast, they can't even get you in in time. 
like you just yeah. freeze like it's it's a uh, straight out of what was that movie that was the the you know the uh, environment goes nuts and is killing everybody um oh the happening no it wasn't it's not the one i'm thinking of there there was a, a disaster movie about yeah the, flash freezes and and you know in, incredible weather stuff and i am this, not a film person so i am the wrong person to ask. Blanking, and people even posted gifts of like this is straight out of that movie it like but, 2012 uh wasn't that one although that one was <sighs> ridiculous and absurd as well uh and this I'm one just was listing you know, movies like, i've never seen <laughs> you can't show a 10 minute long scene of you know and so they do it in 10 seconds in the movie and people just like flash freeze but like mm -hmm. 10 minutes like that's wild and and i i it was from a reputable source it was it was either the weather channel or the, the you know u.s weather service or something and i was like does this happen frequently is this happening more frequently as a consequence of global climate change like i it's it, that's a scary drop the uh, lesson for me from that is i do not need to visit wyoming in the winter yeah yeah nope no thanks uh yeah the, uh, wyoming is a beautiful state to drive through <laughs> that's that's true um, i would not want to live there uh and certainly not when the temperature is falling 33 degrees in 10 minutes it's so crazy it makes me cold in this mankini just thinking about that like oh i mean you should be cold in a mankini anyway. yes i mean you know i'm trying to keep the house warm enough but uh there's no warm enough for this uh, so aside from news stuff getting in your way what else has been getting in your way this week in terms of hobbies what do you get into um, well, not so much this week because we're currently in the middle of an ice storm. Uh, but when I'm not, when I'm avoiding writing, I'm either playing video games, as I mentioned. Um, I love hiking when the weather is decent, which I, I have a pretty broad range of what qualifies for decent. Um, but this is not. It's like and 22 degrees live near and icy. One another. Where do, where are your hiking go tos? Um, my favorite hike of all time so far is uh cape falcon out north of manzanita on the coast oh um it's not a very long hike i think it's like just short of four or five miles out and back but you go out to the edge to the cape and you get this amazing view south and north down the coast um and it, it's got really dramatic cliffs um with like a really dark i don't think it's basalt because of the area but maybe it is i'm not a geologist um but really dark cliffs and then the water especially in early spring has a lot of like white caps so you get that really beautiful color everything's so green it smells good it's like yeah, i take people there all the time i will check that one out that's uh I, that's one of the reasons i have chosen to live in oregon i love the green and people are like oh it rains so much yeah that's why we get yeah. the green i'm fine with the rain because i love the green although last night was super weird because it rains so much that when it's 23 degrees it can't decide that that it should snow at 23 <laughs> degrees it was raining yeah rain at 23 degrees uh but well, and it was uh, ice <laughs> And then it's, it's just yeah, ice all falling from the it sky. Totally froze into, yeah. Uh, but I was like, my son and I were listening to it and we were like, is that hail? Is that, no, it's actually rain and then it freezes. Like, yep. Um, but yeah, that I'm is from, a, oh, where are I'm you from? from Arizona. I'm from Arizona originally. Uh, and so moving up here was a huge change because everything in Arizona is just various shades of brown. Yeah. Uh, and I love Arizona. Uh, especially there are in the some winter. beautiful green places up north. Yes. Um, and once you get up into the kind of foothills of the Rockies, but uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of the. But I'm from the valley, so. Yeah, it's uh, it's. I tell people back home, I'm like, I live in a postcard. I'm never coming back. What are you talking yeah. about? This is yep. the most beautiful place I could ever live. Yeah, I have been um, to every single state, and I live here for a reason. Like this is the most beautiful place. So, uh, folks out there, please come raise my the value of my house by moving here because this is the <laughs> most beautiful state. I don't know. I kind of don't want any more people to move here. I know. Everybody's like, oh, I don't want people to move here. And I'm like, yeah, but, but I, it's good for your value of your home. Please move And I here. have no right to say that because I moved here. Well, exactly. Like I, you know, I know the people who were born here are like, ah, Californians. And, you know, I, I moved Not here me. from Ohio. There <laughs> you, know, you go. Like, yes, there you go. I chose this. Um, well, this last week I have been recording an audio book, which have you ever done that Ooh. before? I've done some like audio narration for some of my microfiction that I do in my newsletter, yeah. um, but that's about it. It's a, it was a lot of learning. Uh, when you upload them to Audible, they have 
a very specific bandwidth they have or in terms of the decibels you know so that you're it's not too loud too quiet which mm -hmm. was helpful because i would not have known that so i'm having to learn a lot about kind of audio recording so it's not a writing project i'm allowed to talk about it on the show but it is <laughs> a uh it's a it was it was a lot of learning it was a lot of fun so yeah, yeah. first first uh, audio book uh congratulations Thank you. Yes, um, I cool. love audiobooks. I'm actually just about to finish listening to one. Um, but yeah, I found audio recording for like spoken word is a lot trickier than you would think. Yes. Like it seems like, oh, you just talk into a microphone and everything's good. And it, no, absolutely well, not. <laughs> no. And I am not a professional. This is all new learning for me. But that's the case with so many of these projects I get into. It's like, I'm going to learn by doing. This is how yep. I'm going to figure out how this is done. But uh, it was it was a lot to learn. I mean, the pros know a lot more than I do. I'm, it was like reading articles where I'd go, okay, I don't even know how to fix this. How do I go through and, you know, make this change to get this because my mm -hmm. peaks are too high or whatever. And so... Uh, it was it was a lot of learning, but I'm always I read those articles and I'm like, I don't even know what that means. What yeah. are you? What is that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there was a lot of the, I mean, and I'm getting feedback from the computer system and it's saying, nope, your file needs to be this way or that way. And I was like, I don't understand. So that was <laughs> it was a good experience. Uh, but um, yeah, that's that that has been a lot of fun and so i'm doing another i'm d trying to do one of my uh books of poetry which is weird one of the things is they charge for audiobooks based on the length which makes total sense like i understand mm -hmm. somebody is evaluating okay i'm you know I i'm i'm going to buy this thing based on based how on much length, entertainment yeah. i'm going to get out of it well with a book of poetry that's you know very few hours <laughs> so it's a lot mm -hmm. of hours of work to create the audiobook because every poem is a separate file for a book that's probably, I don't know how much it's going to be sold for. That's not decided yeah. by me, but it's probably going to be sold for chump change. So folks out there, you can get uh, hours and hours and hours of my work uh, <laughs> very cheaply when that next one comes out. But uh, Right on. I think uh, and for so me, then, audio oh, is, is important because of accessibility. Yes. Like there's so many people, it, myself included, that like my brain is not always able to just sit down and read something, but I can listen to it while I do other things. Um, and that's just like a neurodivergence accessibility, let alone yeah. actual like um, vision issues or what have you. So I think yeah, audiobooks I are so important. Fan. What uh, audiobook are you listening to now? Is it any good? Oh, it's fantastic. I'm listening to Vincent and Teo by Deborah he Heiligman, I think is her last name. It is um, kind of like a narrative nonfiction, but it's completely based on Vincent Van Gogh's letters between him and his brother, Teo. And it tells like the story of their lives through letters. Through letters. It's really, really good. Is it two voice narrators? No, because the way it's told, it's like the narrator has compiled the letters and he gives you some context and then he gives you part of the letter and like that. Which um, is cool. And that framing device is nice for creating a story too. Creating yeah. Yeah, it's it's been really really good. I do I I fell asleep listening to it last night. Oh yeah, I've had done. I that. had two and a half hours left, and I woke up and it was over, and I was like, oh no! Oh, and I, I have to I find had to, my place. Yeah, you know what place I was at? Two and a half hours left. I fell asleep like immediately. Apparently. Yeah. So. Yeah. Which is not a knock on the book. Like I have no, and I find that there are some activities that I can do well listening to an audiobook and some that I can't. Like mm -hmm. I can't do anything that would, you know, some people have the brain for it. They're capable of doing anything and taking in multiple inputs. And for me, it's like, I can do things like I can garden, I can mm -hmm. draw, I can, you know, painting, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of things where, uh, or woodworking, those kinds of things, but anything that involves written text at all. Like if I am working on a project and I look away and have to look at written instructions, as soon as I am reading, the book is gone. And yep. then I have to go back, 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 back. Okay, I got to find my place because I lost the thread. Uh, but I still love audiobooks. They are a wonderful option. And I tell my students, like, this is reading. It still counts. This is... It lights up the same parts of your brain. It yeah. is literally the way the human brain absorbs story does not care if it is written versus auditory. It doesn't care. Yeah. So please, and please, are... please. Yeah. Read, listen to audiobooks. <laughs> listen to audiobooks. And there are there are certainly skills that are involved in the written word that are 
things we have to teach, you know, people mm-hmm. how to do. Yeah. I want my students to be able to do that as well. But there are skills in listening to an audiobook in terms of mm-hmm. interpreting story that are also valuable. And so uh, teaching students, you know, that that's valid. Uh, I, I also tend, sorry, I also tend to remember different things. Mm-hmm. Like if I read read it visually and then listen to it, my takeaways are different, Yeah, which is really, really interesting. Yeah. And I wonder how much of that is that we get this work filtered through the interpretation of that voice narrator. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree. One of my other books is currently uh, in the hands of a um, different voice actor and she's fabulous. It would not have been one that I could have read because the protagonist is a, you know, teenage black female. Like that's not, you know, that's yeah, that might not work. I, I've done readings and I have to say to the audience, like, I'm not a woman, I'm not black. Like this is, you know, yeah. you'll have to just try and imagine. And so hearing her read it was this bizarre experience for me because I was like, this is really good. Like this sounds very different than Oh, wait, I did write this. I was going to say, do you have that moment where you're like, wait, I wrote that? Yep. Like, it's like hearing it for the first time. But she made makes it into something so much better. And in fact, there are a couple of moments where I was like almost tearing up. Uh, she's talking about, there's a scene where she's talking about visiting her mother in jail. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really affected. And then I had to go, oh, I wrote this scene. Yeah, yeah, it came out of me. <laughs> <laughs> made this, this into something else so that's awesome that comes out that'll be really cool for people to you know especially if somebody listens to the one that i narrate and then listens to hers and it'll be like oh yeah this this these are very very different stories but uh she does a fantastic she's also just a lot better at it she's a pro uh right. so that that will be that'll be cool but uh i i am learning about the, the world of audio because a couple of author friends were like this is the future like we've got to have everything on audio and I was like oh I'm not I'm not there <laughs> yet so trying to catch up yeah I've found that doing the narrations for just like little pieces here and there as like practice has been really really helpful yeah just to think about your writing mm-hmm. process in terms of how will this and even before I as part of my editing process I would read my work out loud to myself mm-hmm. that's a good practice I encourage students to do and I know they don't like they I tell them go home and read it out loud and see how it sounds and then when make I make your it, computer going, read it out loud you don't yeah. even have to be the one to do it yep. that's what Which I do very cool it's that's a new thing that you know relatively new that students could do and I'm like it's a good practice let the computer read it to you and you'll hear "Ooh, this sentence sounds weird and it's usually really funny because inevitably there's a name or a word as a speculative writer that is not something the computer knows how to say and so they butcher it and it's hilarious yes i uh, was (laughs) listening to uh something that i just had the computer read to me that was a submission from uh, someone and a lot of the characters were doctor whomever doctor whomever but Mm -hmm. the uh the computer can't tell whether it's the name of a character or the name of a street and so it would say drive and so i had to go oh drive oh yeah that's dr whomever you know that's uh, funny because dr period it doesn't know uh so that was fun to kind of hear the computer learning it's figuring it out uh but well worth the the time that as an exercise that was a good audiobook tangent good job us yeah not bad (laughs) huh uh and yet not about our writing Nope. We're we're being good. Speaking of being good, we do have to do our ad break. So Doug uh, will plug this ad break in. Uh, Doug is awesome. Yeah, Doug's great. Yeah, he's the best. This week's show is brought to you by Pass, an all-new fragrance by Editor-in-Chief Perfumes. This new scent is not one of those sweet scents or those seductive sexy scents perfume companies are frequently pushing. Instead, Pass by Editor-in-Chief is a complex aroma, a mixture of dismissive confidence and crushing rejection. Wearing Pass will make you smell like the kind of person who can obliterate someone's dreams, while also making you smell like the kind of person who sobs into a keyboard after reading an email. Wearing Pass, you'll be a hit at parties. Just by letting people sniff your wrists, you'll find out who is a struggling artist and who is a power-mad corporate hack. Warning, be careful who you take home from those parties. Both are problematic. So get your bottle of Pass today. Available in the smaller, exclusive submissions only size sampler or the simultaneous submissions accepted model. Our next segment is where we share a haiku. And so, Brittany, do you have a haiku to share with us today? 
Uh, I'm not a poet. And I do know it. Um, God of War is fun. Oh, God. God of War is fun. Yep. But it takes a lot of time. Oh, well. Boots up PS4. And you're reading PS4 as a syllable, right? One word. It's one word. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, we'll, 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 we'll allow it. Uh, okay. Nicely done. <laughs> So what's going on with you writing-wise? How can folks support your writing, uh, not for future projects, but in the moment, in the present? In, what's going on with you? Right now, in the present, I just self-released a short story today. Um, it was a, a Taco Bell story that I wrote for Taco Bell Quarterly. If you're not familiar with Taco Bell Quarterly, please go to Twitter right now and find them because it's the most dark and hilarious social media account I've ever encountered and it is a legitimate literary journal it really is it really really is and I wrote a really weird sci-fi Taco Bell story just for them and submitted it I got rejected which is part oh, of the job right yeah, yeah. like um and I, no one else is gonna want this weird Taco Bell story so I just posted it myself to nice. share um so that went up today um you can find it at my website which is bzelkovich.com if you type in b zelkovich you will find me i am the only one in the country yes um and so uh that went up today i've got when is it set i am excited to check that out when is the story so is, is it a sci-fi in the future yeah the so bell? it's called it's called three lessons learned at the taco bell at the edge of the universe so it's kind of like a riff on uh the restaurant at the end of the yes. universe um but the main character is an android worker drive through worker uh and basically the whole concept is that they are learning kind of what it means to live moss while helping all of these sci-fi ip characters who are very much unnamed but they come through as they come through this space drive through oh, that so, is awesome yeah, it's weird i will, I will absolutely <laughs> check that that sounds right up my, and i love uh douglas adams and you know yeah. the the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. So getting back into that world, but with the T-Bell twist uh, sounds perfect for, <laughs> you've written it's... the story for me. I am your target. Oh, you're, you're the target audience. Yes, Got it. I, I will yes. love that. Uh, what else? <laughs> um, I also, you can, I have a newsletter that goes out once a month where I share um, all the updates that happened on my website for the month, as well as a exclusive piece of microfiction, a different one each month that has um, an audio narration. There was that one month where I sent out some really angry Roe v. Wade poetry, but I promise that doesn't happen very often. And is deserved. Um, so that's, that <laughs> yeah. we need that. The, I totally understand that. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of work. Every single month, you've got some piece yeah. of microfiction. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a good practice. It's a good yes. way to keep yourself going, but oh, there, I, have, I have bad months, like, you know. Oh, I do too. And that sometimes it's literally like, hey, it's the night before this needs to go out. We're sitting down and we're hammering out 500 words and it's worked out every oh, time. That's great. So where can so, folks get, get on that list? Um, Again, on my website, if you're on the front page, just scroll all the way down. There's a form to sign up. You just want to make sure to check your spam because it has to reconfirm that you wanted to sign up. And basically there's an option to sign up on any of my pages on my website i i will do that today based on that t-bell story that sounds <laughs> man <laughs> i'm gonna have to up. ramp up my taco bell stories yes exactly well you. i mean no don't do that just for me you can't you know you can't uh, yeah yeah can't write to one living person. on uh, an audience of one so uh uh but uh, um uh, yeah i'll check that out one other thing i do want to plug is um i have a podcast as well it is also a monthly podcast and it is called Top Shelf Librarians. And uh, it's where four library pros talk all things booze and books. So basically we get together once a month, we have drinks, and then we talk about what we read the month before. Oh, that sounds great. So, yeah. And I'm the least funny person on there. Everyone else is much funnier than me, but uh, I'm the, kind of the person regular, in charge of it. Yeah. Who's the, who's the, who are the librarians? Um, so we're all friends uh, in our area that uh work together at some point we are all working in different places now um in libraries and so uh my buddy matt laurel and heather How and we, cool. we all get together every month 
And so uh, what kinds of, are, are there threads in terms of the things that folks, you know, keep coming back to where a particular individual has a genre or is it really kind weird? of, um, so Matt is really into cookbooks. And so he talks a lot about cookbooks and graphic novels. Um, Laurel just likes the weirdest, bleakest, most depressing stuff. And so she kind of runs the gamut and she reads a lot of short fiction. Um, I think her favorite book of this year was Our Wives Under the Sea, mm. um, which is like a horror. And so she, and it was up for a Goodreads nom for best horror this year. So um, that's kind of the fun part is as librarians, we're reading a lot of really current stuff. Yeah. Um, Heather is a uh, high school librarian as well and so she reads a lot of YA um, but also a lot of general and speculative fiction and then I read mostly spec fic occasionally like a non-fiction like Vincent and Teo I just I'll be talking about on this next episode I listened to 10 Steps to Nanette by Hannah Gadsby um, did you watch the Nanette Netflix special that came no. out in like 2020 oh my god it's good Really? It's so good. It, yeah, because it bills itself as a comedy special. And the first half, you're like, she's one of the funniest people I've ever heard. And it's cracking up. And then all of a sudden, she twists it on you. And the whole thing is an experiment in tension. Ooh. So she's like, starts digging through her trauma. And like, it gets wild. Um, and it's gorgeous. And then so she wrote a memoir about all of the events in her life that led to making the net. And it was really good. She read it herself. So fantastic. Highly recommend it. Did you see the uh, Bo Burnham special that came oh. out during uh, COVID? Oh, yeah. I sure that, did. Many times. I <laughs> thought it was brilliant. But same thing. Like, oh, this is funny. Oh, no, it's not. No. Like, this is it's... incredibly dark. <laughs> it was the most accurate piece of media that I saw to represent the pandemic experience to oh, me. Yeah. Like, uh, that last track, the second to last track or whatever, all eyes on me. I had to like pause it and walk away for a second yeah. because I was just so deep in this like spiral he was having during that track. And I wonder how long it will last in terms of its, I wonder if there'll be a lag where people will say, I, I am not ready to watch that again. Like I am not, you know, and then come back to it. But I, if you, if you are feeling ready yet out there, check that out uh, because it is, hard to watch it is brilliant it is incredibly funny and then it's not and, and then sometimes watching... it is again <laughs> yeah and then you'll be like oh that was really funny too and and by then you you've been hit so hard that you're like i really want to laugh because oh my I'm gosh that safe. last one yeah that last you know that last end of that song or whatever mm -hmm. uh, and he is incredibly multi-talented like it's unfair yeah because the really really cool thing about that whole special inside we're talking about Bo Burnham's inside is that he wrote it all himself and he literally recorded it all in his studio on his property by himself so he did all the lighting all the music all the cinematography all the recording all the editing he did the whole thing over the course of what he had hoped would be a pandemic year and of course obviously that was not the case yes. it went on and on is going on and on um but yeah yeah uh, yeah, and you There's... see in it, if those of you who have not seen it, you can tell he's doing it all. Like, yeah. it's an incredible achievement to see how he put all this stuff together by himself. And he does some really clever camera work, and mm -hmm. uh, the lighting is wild, the stuff yeah. that he had to use to do it. And then the kind of backstory, you know, the backstory of, you know, where he had basically given up. Yeah, um, yeah, the, the anxiety got to him. He's having panic attacks on stage and he's like, I can't do live comedy anymore. And literally like January 2020, he was like, I think I've I've worked on myself. I think it's better. I think I can start doing this again. And then boom, the pandemic happened and crushed all of that, um, which I think a lot of us can relate to. We all had things that got I had completely my first, obliterated. Um, actual tour with like a, a book tour planned where I had like uh, signings like I was going to go down to the Bay area and I already had like five bookstores and I was going to, you know, and so the, oh, I had a I genuine book tour planned and the whole thing, you know um, yeah. And, and you can't complain to people. You can't say, Hey, you just lost a loved one to this terrible. Right. Right. And my five 
book signings were canceled. Like, right. yeah. you know, I, I didn't get to go that. hike in Arizona for spring right. break. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Was, another thing that we lost was even the sympathy. Yeah. <laughs> this thing yeah. didn't go well in my life and it was nothing compared to what others suffered. So, yep. but yeah, that, that do check out if, if you did have a less uh, uh, life shattering event during COVID. Watch the Bo Burnham special so that you can go. Oh yeah, the, just being trapped was awful. That's it is yeah. valid to have lost yes. something. Uh, I do want to say like shout out to my favorite thirty second track in that program is uh, ATL, and he's talking about like he's like so depressed. He's like I'm at an all time low, and then it breaks into the most upbeat chipper like 30 yes. second sound beat that is perfectly describing a panic attack yeah and i laugh so hard every single time because i'm mentally ill <laughs> well and i had not had my first panic attacks i, I struggle with anxiety and, and mm -hmm. depression and stuff and i had not had uh, before it had been depression never anxiety and until relatively recently before the lockdown i had never had a full-on panic attack and so it was like oh this is a little close to home like i just yeah. experienced this and i was like Ugh. yeah that's uh it's watching it's it at the time that it came out like like as Ben is saying, watch it when you're ready because it's rough. But I think there's actually something to be said for watching it in the moment when we weren't as distant because there was a like a, a weird commiseration catharsis that came out of watching it, but also an unhealthy like obsession. <laughs> and yeah. I listened to the soundtrack a lot like on Spotify and it got to the point where my husband be like, hey, you're listening to Inside a lot. Are you OK? <laughs> <laughs> right. It was it wasn't it got to the point where listening to it was a cry for help. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm still in this place. This place, which place? The inside soundtrack. Yeah. The ATL. That's where I'm at. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> uh, so, uh, one of the things we do for the show is we have a weekly poll so that uh, listeners, viewers can jump in and share what they. Um... Oh no, I jumped ahead. There's something else that I wanted to ask you about. Uh, oh, your no. short stories. Yeah. Um, I have so many stories coming out next year um i think i have four coming out next nice. year um so i just had one come out in november um called lifelike and it's at wild wild blood press um it's a horror flash fiction haunted house ish story about how long um it's just under a thousand words yeah real flash yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah yeah it's like i think it's 989 or something like that um so that just came out and then soon i'm hoping in january i'm supposed to be having um a story in an anthology called lolcraft a compendium of of eldritch humor oh yes i yes. have heard about this yes, yes. Uh, that, that will be fun um my story in that is called bell biv derailed and it, <laughs> Nicely done. yeah yeah so i think i can leave it at that it knows it, it is <laughs> the title Jason, sells it. Yep. and that title uh goes together and then I just sold two more stories and I don't know anything about release dates. One is in tree and stone and the other one we haven't officially announced yet. So TBD, um, TBA. Oops. And then in April on earth day, we have, there's an anthology from Laxa media coming out. Um, it's called life beyond us. Orig 28 original SF stories and science essays. So this is a really, really cool project. I'm so excited about. Um, it is, 28 sci-fi writers writing stories about like life beyond earth uh. and whether that's alien life or humans off of earth, whatever. And then they partnered with the European Astrobiology Institute and got scientists to write essays on the science in the stories and like talk about the plausibility and mm. things like that. So, oh, yeah. um, that is really, that is, uh, yeah, that, that'll be yeah. interesting that'll be good for all spec writers to, to yeah. read that, to go, oh yeah, that's something to watch out for in my own fiction in the future. Yeah, it's, so it's massive. such a cool concept. And um, it was a really, really cool, I just said cool so many times, but it was so cool because it, it was a Kickstarter. They'd invited, I think 25 or 26 known authors, like Mary Robinette Kowal is in it, uh, Premi Mohammed is in it. And so, um, they all got invited and then they reached a Kickstarter stretch goal where they opened up to, to pick two open call stories 
and I was one of them. How so cool. like lost my mind a little bit at oh, that. Yeah. Um, so very, very excited. Um, that comes out on Earth Day. So April 22nd. Oh, that is great. I, I'm in a uh, yeah. local group that's going to be putting out an anthology around Earth Day as well. But the, their their concept, which I think is very clever, is uh, solar punk. It's, okay. you know, sustainability. What might the world be like? Which is a real writing challenge. I've been telling oh, yeah. Creative Writing Club, normally we torment our characters. We put them in places that are awful. And to write a story that is compelling and interesting and has conflict and yet the is people hopeful. in the story have figured out a way to live in nature in a sustainable way, that's going to be really tricky. So uh, I'm excited really to see what my students come up with for that. But the concept of the anthology is that it's going to be all out online and it is going to be just people from our community. And so it's not, this isn't, you know, authors from around the world. This is how do the people in this community who are writers envision our own community in the future oh very and nice so that will be I, I hope it flies i hope it works but i think it's a really cool concept uh so yeah we'll see i should write something for it myself i have not done that oh no <laughs> <laughs> just add that to the project list yes exactly it goes on the list well i wrote a piece for um uh the timberline review through willamette writers where they they put out an all call and i was like oh yeah you know to do here's the prompt mm -hmm. And I sat down and wrote a piece in a day, which, you know, you know, a lot of these pieces we work on for a yeah. long time. And this was just one of those that just came it to falls me. falls out of you sometimes. Day. Yeah, it was yeah. really, and it turned out really well. And then I reached out to some other authors and got some feedback and, and help on, you know, polishing it up so that I didn't, I didn't turn it into them that day, but uh, it was <laughs> nice. So I need to do the same thing with this solar punk and just take the time to say, okay, I'm going to craft a piece uh it is nice when when it is themed like that piece that you mm -hmm. wrote for where it's you know so what did you do uh, i don't know if you can share what yours yeah. is about for that one so my story is called the lament of kivulakis um and it is set on titan um where there are these hyper cold methane leaks and the story is about a couple who are on an extended uh research outpost like they're living there for two years or whatever it is um, researching life in the methane lakes. Um, and so there's space whales, spoiler alert. Um, and, and it's really about the, I don't want to give too much away in the story, but it is about this couple's relationship and, and how for a long time together, just you two, what that can do to a relationship even though I wrote this very much pre-pandemic. I was gonna say, um, yes, was this, uh, was this a no. Pandemic? No, this this story actually sold last December. And so, you know, publishing is a really slow process, as I know you know. Um, and so I'm really excited for it to come out. I will say, as you were talking about solar punk, um, I use that term speculative because I dip my toes into science fiction, but I am not a scientist. Um, I'm not good at science. Um or I've not used my efforts to become good at science, I guess. Um, and so I felt a little bit like, did they mean to pick me? Like, yeah. <laughs> did well, I trick it them? It could be that some scientist was like, this is something I would like to write about. Like, this is mm -hmm. a really interesting concept, uh, you know, and and I, I, I love that pairing, that idea that somebody's going to be then saying, this is how this lines up with what we know about Titan, and yeah. this is where it doesn't. And that's that's cool. And one of the editors, she is, um, she is a scientist in some aspect. And so she, when we did the edit letter, so when you, for listeners, when you get a story accepted, then they usually go through and they send you edits to go over and finalize everything before you sign a contract and you get paid. Um, and so when she sent back the edits, almost all of them were just science-based, like, hey, this isn't how this would work. Can you like edit that and I'm like oh man I'm so glad you're editing this because I had yeah. no idea <laughs> like, oh that's a great experience yeah that's the kind yeah. of feedback that's the most helpful you know it's mm -hmm. I mean it's wonderful to get uh copy edits and story edits and developmental yeah. edits although developmental edits can be <sighs> just uh, rough <laughs> For they folks who don't know the distinction, copy edits are things like you need a comma here. You, you know, you uh, punctuated Grammar. this incorrectly. Grammatical stuff. Yeah. And developmental edits are like 
this, this is not where the story actually begins. You this need doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, you know, this, this, this whole plot needs to be rewritten and you get those and they can just be heartbreaking when you go, this editor's right. I need to make <gasps> this huge change. This has so to like, be, you know, hey, you might want to try this in a totally different perspective. Okay, I have to rewrite the whole thing, you know. But Have uh, you considered writing it from this character's point of uh -huh. view? Oh, you mean the whole 80,000 word book? Yep. Oh, gee, write thanks. The novel? No, I okay. hadn't. Uh, yeah, I tell students about, you know, and as an exercise, rewriting something from another perspective, but I make my students do one page, not 80,000 yeah. pages. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's, uh, it's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. So our weekly poll. So our every week we put up a poll online. Uh, two weeks ago, it was Elf on a Shelf. Uh, this last week, it was uh, French fry or tater tots, regardless ranch or ketchup which you know do you prefer ranch or ketchup and uh, this week what should be our weekly poll we can keep it kind of french fry jason and i was thinking king of the garbage heap mcdonald's versus taco bell since we talked about taco bell so much already they should just sponsor the show have you talked to them they, uh, they really should reach out i would accept taco bell money so um, <laughs> yes i would accept mcdonald's money as well although I'm going to tip my hand. I prefer Taco Bell. So, well, shocker. Who do you think I prefer? I wrote a whole dang story. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Uh, my fiance's son actually works at a T. Actually, I don't think he does anymore, but he worked at a T Bell. And so we had the hookup. So, you know, it was pretty oh, cool. You know, you go in and uh, I need a hookup. We always paid for our food. Everything was. Yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, knowing uh, knowing somebody at the T Bell is, uh, is advantageous. <laughs> but I mean, maybe not advantageous in every way. Sure. As, as folks seeing me in a mankini know right now that <laughs> there, there's the downside of the t-bell uh, uh, you know what no body shaming here that's right that's right you know i'm all living my best beautiful. life in this neon green mankini uh, not all mankinis are beautiful but all bodies in mankinis are beautiful <laughs> I'll, I'll, let, <laughs> I'll let the viewers decide about that too uh so we don't have a particular we don't have a listener question today but Folks, please do send in listener questions uh, at to send them to notapipedpublishing at gmail.com and put in the subject line listener question and we'll get those on the show. Doug, the producer, luckily provided us with a question for today. He wanted to know. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. So when you when you are writing, do you listen to music? Yes, I do. Um, so actually, music is a part of my pre-writing. So when I first get the concept for a story, um, it's usually just like a flash of an image and a line of dialogue. Um, and then as it percolates and it builds, I start to get a sense for like the tone and the vibe and all the, all the weird nebulous things that are hard to pin down. And as that builds, I start making a playlist. Um, oh, so cool. the playlist is really important for probably more than two reasons, but, um, one is that pre-writing really nailing the vibe of the story um, and then I listen to that every time I work on the story. So it becomes this sort of, it's a trick for my brain. Oh, I hear these songs. I work on this project. So it like locks me into writing mode quicker. That's a great idea. Um, which is an ADHD hack. Um, and it works very well. It is unfortunate for my husband because I, especially when I'm writing a book, you know, that's a big playlist and it is on constantly while I'm writing the, like, while I'm working on the book. So like, oh, we're making dinner. I'm listening to the book playlist. <laughs> but at least it's a playlist and not yes. the song. He doesn't have yes. to hear the same song because I, my music habit is like, I'll discover some new song and then play it to death. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. you know, over and over. Absolutely. Over. Uh, and then go, oh, uh, I can't you, hear that song again for the next decade. And then it'll come back. You have to ring like, oh, every ounce of dopamine out of that song. Yes, exactly. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's, see, I can't listen to new music while I write because mm -hmm. it's distracting. So if it's a song that I've done that process before of playing to death, mm -hmm. now it can be in the background and it doesn't distract me and it's fine. But I, the process that you're describing of the playlist as a way to kind of get into the groove of the story, I'm going to have to try that. I think that's a really cool idea. I've had yeah. a couple of authors uh, that I've worked with who, after the fact, created a playlist to, as part of the promotion. 
mm-hmm. for their books where they said, if you're interested, it's free. Here is this playlist to listen to while you read my book, uh, Sang Chrono, yeah. Jin. Uh, yeah. I just do that naturally. And then I share it. Well, I also write fan fiction a lot. And so this is any sort of writing. It gets a playlist full stop. And so a lot of times if, when I'm posting fan fiction that I will not reveal my name for, um, <laughs> It, I want to be I on the record. The no shade. Fan fiction no. is legit. Like I, I love it, obviously. Like, and all writing is real writing. But um, well, there are... what I always tell my students when they're like, "Oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I write fanfic." I say, "You mean like Shakespeare did? All of yeah. Shakespeare is fanfic. Every single play, but maybe one. We're not sure about Mary Wives of Windsor. All the others are fanfic. Yeah. Fanfic is legitimate fiction writing. It's yes. totally fine. So yeah, I, yeah. I no shade at all about fanfic. And so many. I learned so much about original fiction writing from writing fanfic so much. Um, so like no shade to fanfic. I love it, but all my stories get playlists and I know there's some writers who like, they can't listen to music with lyrics or yeah. anything like that. And I don't care. I'll have instrumental. I, for my lament of Kivulakis, there's legitimately whale soundtracks on that playlist, but then there's also like regular music <laughs> So um, the, the disconnect would be wild for me. Like yeah. I'm listening to whale sounds and then a song starts. I can imagine your husband's like, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Luckily that story wrote itself. It took a lot of time, but active writing sessions, it was only like two or three writing sessions, yeah. but it yeah. had to, it had to percolate. So he didn't have to listen to it for very long. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of whale sounds. <laughs> no. Uh, but that's a cool idea. I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to reading that one myself. Like that's, yeah. Space whales. That's space uh, whales. That's winner. Yeah, gotta gotta have them. <laughs> I, my next novel has the the feature that is uh, I'm, that I'm so excited about getting into people's hands is werewolves as puppies, and oh. so you know adorable, yeah, and deadly. Like yeah. <laughs> you know, like these are because if it's a three year old child, that's a three year old wolf. That thing will kill you. Yeah, but the three year old, you know, then it turns into a toddler essentially. Oh, and so, are you? Is it like, is time the same for aging as a, as a wolf form versus a child form? Or is it like an eight month old puppy? Versus, no. You know and I mean? so it's not super clear, but the, the, you know, it's not like the, the, the wolves. Not the like wolves dog say years. Like, yeah, but it's not dog years. Yeah. So this wolf, this werewolf has been a, you know, and, and some werewolves in the story are turned, you know, as adults. So the community has a, a weird is- distribution in terms of ages, but they are able to have children. And so when a couple of werewolves pair off and have a kid, that kid is a werewolf from birth. From birth. And that means they're a human, you know, baby, but they're being trained to hunt and stuff by another older woman in the huh. community. Uh, who's a great character too. <clears throat> uh, the, the the teacher in the community is this old woman, older woman, and she is, you know, this gray wolf who takes these kids out into the woods to hunt game and stuff. And then the werewolf pack is, so they're introduced and they're just adorable and cute and yet covered in blood and bringing a deer head mm-hmm. into the lodge. And the human <laughs> characters are like, what you know and then later they become really important in the story no spoilers yeah. so yes the uh, the baby werewolves i'm like oh, I, hope, I hope people will go a book with baby werewolves i'm gonna read that um, <laughs> so where can folks find your stuff uh you can find me on my website is the easiest way to find me i'm really really good about there's a blog that updates at least once a week um and so you can find me at bzelkovich.com that I'm going to spell Zelkovich for y'all like I do to the doctor's office. That is Z as in zebra, E-L-K-O, V as in Victor, I-C-H. And I will uh, put that in the show notes as well. And of course, that's going to be the in the title of the yeah. episode. So you've all seen that, uh, how that's spelled. But uh, yes, please go check that out and sign up for that newsletter. I'm going to do that yeah. today myself. Free fiction. And where can they find month. you on Twitter? Uh, I am at B-Z-L-W-I-N. Uh, at, that's it, at B Z L Win. I don't say that out loud very often. Yeah, right. It feels weird to say. So, <laughs> yes, uh, uh, and and you can probably find uh, be uh, via mine as well because we interact a lot on Twitter. So, yep. Uh, I'm a teacher and, Mormon, so we'll we'll be gabbing. Yes, and I have a Facebook for for the uh, writer Facebook too. It's all linked on my website. You can find it all. So, um, yeah, 
that's where you can find me. Well, All my stories are linked. People there, should so. connect because you're going to have an exciting year as a writer. This yeah, year. there's a lot coming up. That's why I had to start a newsletter. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, well, thank you so much for doing this. I've got a lot of folks to thank here. Uh, thanks to the artist Max Oakland, who reached out and provided one of his songs for our intro song. The song's called I Prefer the Dusk. Uh, let Max know you like it by following him on Twitter at Max Oakland. And thanks to Halizna CCO for their song Kids for the ad break. If you're in a band or a musical artist and you'd like something to be on the show, I would love to highlight a listener's work like Max's song. So email that to me. Thanks, as always, to Doug, the producer, for making the show sound good and taking the blame when it doesn't. I really appreciate the last part, especially, Doug. Thank you for that. Um, and I cannot forget to mention that Writers Not Writing is a production of Not A Pipe Publishing. So please go to notapipepublishing.com. Check out the amazing books written by writers who didn't procrastinate too much. If you like this show, rate and review it wherever you found it. And please check out B. Zalkovich's work. Uh, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate it. I want to make sure you get the last word. So how shall we wrap up today? Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, today, we're going to wrap up with like a little bit of kind of like how I wrap up top shelf librarians. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher it. But um, so basically, you've been listening to Writers Not Writing. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, we'll be back next week, two weeks. I don't know the schedule. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're a person who likes to imbibe, reach for the top shelf. You've earned it. <laughs>